Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Dr. Stephen Green here, the success doctor. Big, big important topic today. I'm going to call it the studying and test taking disconnect. And this is something that's based on things I've been seeing a lot in my tutoring caseload over the last couple of weeks. I've been seeing it for years, but it seems like in the last couple of weeks, uh, it, just, it just spiked a little bit. And I wanted to address it. Uh, I've had parents, I've had students ask me about this specifically. So I want to I kind of give my viewpoints on something. So first of all, the mission of this podcast, very simple. Mission of everything I do, very simple. To provide parents, to provide students with actions that you can take right away. And I always say pause the button, do them right in the middle of the podcast if that works for you. But certainly long term, uh, short and long term, to maximize your education. This is the theme of the podcast. This is the theme of my community. This is the theme of my Facebook page. This is the theme of my what, blah, 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 everything. So here's what it boils down to. <clears throat> I have a students. I have students. And they say, I studied. I got the review sheet from the teacher. I looked at my notes. I went over my quizzes. I went over my lab reports. I went over practice problems. I did more examples. I reread the chapter. I looked at my outlines, so on and so on and so on. And then I felt prepared. And then I got into the test. And uh-oh, the test wasn't exactly like what I studied. Or it was five times harder than what I studied. Or I felt like I really knew 75% of it and really didn't know what to do because one question I didn't know was 20% of the test. And it's frustrating, or I'm frustrated, the students are saying to me, uh, they didn't know what to do. The rationale often from the educational standpoint, the teacher standpoint or the test uh, creator standpoint is, is you're trying to get engaged critical thinking. So maybe there's a situation where a uh, student's learning about a topic, topic A and topic B, but then the question might be to combine them in the test. But that's getting a little bit ahead of the discussion. So let me, let me address A, how I think a good way to prep for a test is. So let's just assume uh, normal circumstances. So number one, you got to know what's going on with the topic. You don't want to have gaps in your knowledge. You don't want to have things you obviously aren't prepared for. So a lot of things people were saying, uh, they went over review sheets, they went back through their notes, they redid practice problems, they reread sections. And this is across every grade level, third grade up till graduate school. So one of the things I work with people on, when I see people in my office, when I work with people online, is let's do a what if. Okay, I'm going to use the example here because it's, it's something that I did yesterday of DNA. DNA is a very, very standardly taught biology topic. It's based in the nucleus of the cell, and it has a composition. It, it was discovered over several experiments uh, culminating in the 1950s, the famous Watson and Crick uh, presentation and based on many other people's work and such on and such on. So DNA is the kind of thing where there's going to be detailed minutia. What are the different bases, ACGT? How is it structured? There's a backbone. How many strands are there? There happen to be two. How are they held together? How does existing DNA make new DNA? How does the information in the DNA utilized in the cell? And this is standard eighth, ninth, 10th grade, sometimes even younger, uh, science slash biology. And then there's even classes specific on genetic engineering, blah, 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 blah. So I'm working with the student. I said, listen, let's do this. Let's do, let's flip the script. Okay. Instead of just learning the material, let's try to role play what the teacher's thinking. And, and again, digression. I never try to at all uh, dis or disparage a teacher. Okay. And they're doing their job. It's a hard job. They're doing it well. Um, but, but I'm just using the teacher as an example, the test creator here, just to be clear. Anyway, let's role play the teacher. You're the teacher. You have to make up a test about DNA. What kind of questions would you ask? Well, let's think of some detailed questions. Name 
the four different pieces. How is DNA different than RNA? These are questions that could be answered with a multiple choice, a fill in the blank, maybe a matching, something that's single fact based. Then we've got more uh, essay, short answer, discussion kind of questions. What happens if DNA gets damaged? Why is it important that DNA is preserved from generation to generation of cells? Or, or across the lifespan of organisms. So you have minutia, factual, single fact-based questions, and you have larger idea things. So what you wanna do is let, let's take ideas and think of them, I'm saying this to the students, let's think of them across all these different types of ways that you might have to show that you know the information. Because often people are only studying the information in the same way that they're taught it. So I think one of the places the disconnect arises from, if you learn it as kind of a bullet point, fact one, fact two, fact three, fact four, fact five, so on, so on. But then the exam or the test or the quiz or whatever assessment it is, is saying, well, explain this to me in a free write or explain this to me in a paragraph. There's a situation there where the student may not be ready for that or they may not be, they may not have practiced with specifically that way. So what I did with this student yesterday was we took this information and we represented it five different ways. One was his bullet points, which was essentially the notes. One was as let's make up short answer questions where the answer is the, what, what the information is. Another one was true or false. Uh, there's the same number of cytosine as guanine in the DNA or whatever. Fourth one, short answer, two, three sentence, uh, a small paragraph. Fifth one, long answer. What question could you come up with where the answer would have to be a seven to 10 sentence essay? And this didn't necessarily take a lot of time, but clearly it's gonna take more time than just going over your bullet points again and again and again and again. So I'm not gonna suggest this is gonna solve every single issue with what I'm calling the studying and test taking disconnect, because it may not. But what I think it does do is it gives a greater understanding of what's going on so that when the time comes to show that you know the information, you can do it in multiple ways. One more thing we also did, which uh, I talked about a lot with students, is, is this idea of bottom up and top down, bottom to top, top to bottom. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm doing an entire podcast just on this, but let me touch on it. Bottom up in my mind, remember this is about taking action, is starting with your details and building them up as ideas into the big idea. So the little details about the DNA become, what does the DNA do, which becomes the purpose of DNA and so on and so on. Top down starts with the biggest idea, DNA. Okay, what does it do? Then you have sort of your legs off of it with all the different categories and eventually you work down to the details and you wanna be able to do both. Details building up to big, and big, breaking back down to details. So my suggestion here to avoid the study test disconnect is to study the material and try to prep in multiple ways. Don't only try to learn the material in the same way that you were taught it. Now that seems counterintuitive because it's like, well, isn't that the whole point? of being taught it? The answer is no, because this is the whole idea of critical thinking, which I'm a fan of. It's not outrageous for a teacher or an instructor to expect you to be able to interpret material during a test. Critical thinking is an important skill. This is why it's so important to prepare to be able to do that, to anticipate the kind of questions you might see. Uh, Sometimes you may overstudy that's the question people say to me. Well, what if I study too much? Well, that's a good problem to have. Better to overstudy than understudy or to concentrate and study only 75% of the material. So let's bring it back around. There's another complaint I do get where people just say, well, the test is 10 times harder than my review material. You know, the sample questions in class are easy and then the test was really hard. That's a toughie. I mean, that, there you just have to know your stuff. I mean, I, I don't really have a great solution for that. But it all comes back to preparation and, more importantly, and this is the recurring theme here, 
being able to look at the material in different ways in order to try to prepare for it and be able to show that you know it in different ways. So I talked about reviewing your material, talked about the bottom up and the top down ideas, all these things. So the key is to know the material in a multifaceted way. Take the same material. Can you show that you understand it on the detail level? Fact, 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 true, false, fill in the blank, matching, things like that. Can you show it the same material in a slightly broader way, a two, three sentence short answer, or maybe labeling a diagram, something like this. And finally, can you show it in a macro way? Write a 10 sentence paragraph explaining the entire concept, including all of the details. The key, the point is ultimately, ultimately it's the student's responsibility to do the best they can on the test. And sometimes it can be challenging, not just because of the information, we accept and we understand that, but we proactively plan to work around it. Okay. That's the key. Again, the, this podcast, make the grade. It's all about giving you information to help you take action. Okay. So I would love to hear your feedback about this. Uh, this was a topic I got, I did a live about this the other day and I got 11 different people texting me. That's even not even just commenting on the post. Yeah, this is a problem. My kid complains about it all the time. So I'm trying to give you some direction you can point it. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Please engage. You can comment on the podcast page. You can comment on my social media, which is Make the Grade, the Make the Grade Maximum Education community. I would really encourage people to get involved in that. Email S-G-R-E-E-N-E at M-A-K-E-T-H-E-G-R-A-D-E dot net. S Green at Make the Grade dot net. Make the Grade dot net is the website and so on and so on at make the grade in Twitter and blah, 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 blah. So Instagram, I appreciate everybody listening in closing. I love the fact that people are subscribing. The subscriber list grows every week and people are sharing the ideas. I would love to think that the more people that listen to this information, the more active, proactive and engaged learners we have. And that's really important. So thank you very much. Dr. Steve Green, the success doctor, looking forward to communicating with you in the next episode. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.